Now this is probably the single most significant test of all of the tests we've done and I've said that before but this really is it because load dump scenarios as Heine will now explain to you there is no there are no fixed components that you can buy off the shelf that handles it beyond 40 volts of course we're handling we, we've got to handle that scenario in 48 volts so if this doesn't work I think saying we're back to square one is a bit melodramatic but it'll knock us back a long long way. I think Heine has been quite good at hiding his fear of these tests. There's so much resting on this. Yeah. Alright, this is a big deal. Big test here. Alright, we, we start at two kilowatt and we do the load dump testing now. So I'm gonna kill the battery. Sure you, sure you don't want any um, safety glasses? Yeah, got them. Got my safety <laughs> glasses right here. Okay, I'm turning it off now. To me, this is art in a way. Designing something like this, make it work, that's art. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Is it off? Yeah, it's off now. Nothing happened. Didn't see anything here. Let this me is exactly what it's supposed to happen. Setting on about 50, just on 60 volts going off again. Yeah, perfect. Very cool. So explain that to me. So we definitely had an over voltage scenario, I can see that, that's why the alarm's going off. Right. Andrew, rev the engine up, we want to get full charge power now. Okay, that will do, we're at four kilowatt, now just keep it up. Okay, four kilowatt, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Yeah, four. Cool, yeah. switch it off. You know. Also the way you captured it, that you can see exactly mm -hmm. transistors turning on. That's just the voltage, voltage that's just voltage over the transistors. So you did hear the engine rev woo, go up. That's when the load f got taken away from the alternator because I disconnected the battery. But we had four kilowatts of energy flowing and that energy flow doesn't stop immediately. It takes about two, 300 milliseconds before the alternator is being shut down. It's not producing any energy anymore so in those two three hundred milliseconds four kilowatts of energy have to go somewhere and if you don't give them anywhere to go you get massive voltage spikes you can get up to 300 or 400 volts of voltage spikes which is called a load dump scenario and it's a big problem in 48 volt systems but this is what this extra little bit on the circuit board is for that when the voltage ramps up uh, the board realizes that and short circuits that energy, turns back on, short circuit to keep it at a safe level so we don't get these really high voltage spikes that can destroy the electronics and all the components connected to this. Also it's very unsafe to have three, four hundred volts somewhere. So the, the whole scenario of a load dump is very, very unlikely, but it can happen when you're charging full power and the battery disconnects for whatever reason, a fault, a fuse blows the BMS turns off whatever reason and we've just proved that uh, the system that we've designed works and it does exactly what we're hoping it would do. Okay battery is back on. The cool thing about this is that we're using three different... Hang on stop you can't give away the farm we spent a lot of time and effort getting this right this might even be a world first it's why nobody's ever done this before and it's what makes the dc hub possible andrew you have to restart the engine so we can uh, reset the alternator controller cool i'm going to let you into a little bit of a secret this part was what we were most worried about this needed to succeed or the entire project could might not even happen at all we had to do everything that we've done to be able to test in. this properly and we have all right, and it's done and we deserve a beer and it means that our release date for early 2026 will happen we're gonna hook up a 2000 watt inverter with this cable so we're just testing here at the moment. This is not a proper installation the way you should be doing this with these inverters because we have not got all the safety circuits in place, but we're in a laboratory environment and we are quite aware that 
This is not up to standard. But this is only to discharge the battery. All we want to do is hook up a heat gun to discharge the battery while we're playing around and testing charging and discharging. That's all it is. So the purpose of our morning here at Amtron is to now set up the parameters and test the parameters of the battery. Of course, Amtron made this battery. It's here in Western Australia. The charge currents with 48 volts that we're achieving here are so high that they could potentially reduce the longevity, the life of a battery. So we're calculating the optimum time when the system actually slows the charge down so these batteries will last year after year after year after year. So this now is the very first time we've fitted an inverter to the system. Ah oh, look I've never seen that before. That is very cool because now we've got the alternator directly to the battery. The multi plus here you can see the grid there in the future there will even be another box here saying solar while they're doing that i wanted to mention the dc hub now has a different bracket it's a little bit smaller a little bit easier to fit in confined spaces there new and old what do you reckon see can you see the comparison there these are of course brackets for dc hub same height but quite a bit narrower and for the month of november free that's 150 dollars just for the month of november to celebrate our new bracket uh, a very good question on a previous video about canvas this system uses canvas for communications so we use it for settings and monitoring it does not rely on the can box to operate so if the can box the can box fails at any time the charging circuits stay they operate as normal am i correct absolutely yeah and also the load circuits the whole communication is just there to optimize the system if it can't be optimized through it it will just go into a fallback state not a limp home mode still a mode that operates very well and you can just keep on going right now hannah's very 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 excited about what are you what are you excited about the battery is now in control of the alternator the battery is sending it's set of instructions to the alternator controller to say hey mate this is how i want to be charged because the battery is the one that knows and it's working you're probably sitting there watching now and there's still this question in your mind going why 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 do we do all of these things why load dump scenarios why to go to 48 volt and it's still the possibilities the possibilities that we've got for off-grid living, for overlanding in a different way, for to a degree ditching your house and saying like, I can live on the road now because we need energy. We as humans, as people, we, we need energy for all the things that we do, for hot water, refrigeration, all these things. Electrical energy is so vital to what we do. Sure, you can, you can do without, but if you want to do something for a longer period of time, electrical energy is just essential. And 48 volt compared to 12 and 24 volt just offers so much more possibilities. Charge rates that you just simply cannot achieve with 12 volt. I, I have not yet seen a 400 amp 12 volt charging system. Not even from a mains charger into a 12 volt battery bank. It's just technically not feasible because once you deal with these high currents and the weights it just simply doesn't work 48 volt will enable us to do things while being mobile and I'm, I'm not just talking about camping and overlanding here i'm talking about an industry in general we're, we're electrifying more and more things machines technical equipment that we are using somewhere far away from where we've got 240 volt power plugs and everything needs to be charged. Think about, let's say drones, for example. Think about machinery that operates on 48 volt, not massive, but remote controlled machinery. There's a whole industry developing around 48 volt and it is happening right now. And the big problem is everywhere where do you charge these things? What if there isn't something to plug it into a wall? 
And I think the technology that we are developing, and that's why we're going to such a length and we're trying to address every little tiny problem that might be there. Andrew and I are sitting together, bouncing ideas off each other and thinking, could this happen? Could that happen? What can we do to stop this? So that we have got a solution for this industry, for this market that is coming, that is enabling people to do all these cool things, all these energy hungry things. But they are being able to do them far, far away from a grid. It's almost like we're creating micro grids everywhere because wherever you have got a combustion engine and you can connect an alternator that's got a five kilowatt charge capacity, that is about the same size as a lot of solar inverters have when they feed in. To understand how much energy that is, I've said it in a video before, a 15 amp 240 volt plug for a caravan delivers 3.6 kilowatts at max. This delivers 5 kilowatts. That is such a big step up. It's, it's not just a step up, it's going to a completely different segment. I'm so excited about this. I think this is the start of a revolution. It's not just evolution, like I said, it is a revolution. It, it will change the future we do these things. All right, my answer to that, Heiner, is that I know, see, Heiner's blue sky thinking, I'm kind of a little bit, a little bit narrower in terms of I'm thinking about caravans, campers, 4x4s, etc. And we, we keep using the term game changing, we're using revolution, blah, 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 and these are all nice platitudes, but it actually is. Imagine the following scenario. Your Land Cruiser 200, you've been driving a bit and you're towing a great big caravan and you arrive and your batteries are nice and full and you but you don't want to plug in you don't want to go to a place where there are lots of other people you want to off-grid a bit so you off-grid for a day by day two most of you your batteries are running very very thin in Australia if you've got a good solar array on the top you can get away and obviously you are limited in what you can use your electrical energy for, but you're conscious of it. But after a relatively short time, there's a good chance that, well, you're going to have to plug into a campsite. You're going to have to go back on grid to charge your batteries. And you're going to have to be there at least overnight to get a decent charge. Because the drive from where you are to the place where you plug in, eh, it's a soft charge. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it helps. Of course it helps. What we're saying is this turns that in 180 degrees. It's not evolution, it's revolution. You will never need to think about going to a campsite plug-in again because you will need to drive such a short distance to get a full charge in your battery bank that by the time you arrive at your, with all of the other grey nomads, your battery's at 100%. Another reason why it's 180 degrees. All right, you're towing and you stop for a coffee and it's still connected. The charging circuits are still active. Even though the engine of your, star, of your car is off because you're having coffee, the current still is flowing to charge your caravan batteries as if you were still driving. So if your caravan is at one particular place off grid and is never going to see shore power, all you'll have to do is go for a short drive up the beach to go and do some fishing in your car, equipped with the 48 volt system, come back, plug it into your van and boom, all that energy you've created while driving on your fishing trip, it goes back into the caravan. And it's so fast that that amount of energy is meaningful. You haven't given it a soft charge, you've given it a hard, full on charge, more charge than you'll get out of a wall socket at flat out power just by driving your car. Think about how that's going to change your life. It, it's a, it changes the game completely. And that is why we're so excited about it. Our next stage now, if you're still watching, is to install these into vehicles that will be towing these big vans. The vans will stay 12 volt, but the charging system in the vehicle will be 48 volt. And it is so efficient 
that it can not only charge itself, but also charge the van incredibly quickly because it's not so much, um, it's less, you know, the amount of storage and the battery bank that you have is of less consequence than the speed you can charge it. Because if you can charge it faster, you can have a smaller battery bank with a smaller payload and small and less cost if you can get the energy back into the battery faster. And that is the most single most important innovation with 48 volts. Up to now, 48 volts has been clumsy, very complicated, and a bit worrisome because of those complications. The Egon 48 volt hub changes everything. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.